want to welcome everyone to the Directed IRA webinar and special podcast episode. We are talking about solo 401k structures and strategies. This is one of the most common self-directed accounts out there. It's an awesome option for those who qualify for it. Mm. <laughs> We're going to talk about that yep. and we'll talk about why it's really cool. So, um, but before we get into that, I want to make a couple notes. Um, First, the slides. We do have some slides with this that are mm -hmm. actually quite detailed. Mm -hmm. And um, you're going to be able to get that at directedira.com slash webinar following this. We'll post the recording. So if you miss any pieces of this today, give us a few days. The recording will get up on the site, directedira.com slash webinar. And the slides will be posted there as well with all the detail um, that we've been go going over today. Um, there's been some updates on contribution amounts, what we're going to see for 2023. Aaron was just updating me on those, actually. <laughs> I was like, oh, geez, I'm just barely keeping up with 2022. Um, <laughs> we already got some stuff around the corner for 2023, which is exciting because you'll be able to put more money in. And um, But let's get over to the slides here. Aaron, do you want to talk about Q&A and how we want to handle that? Just so yeah, everybody knows. Yeah, so here, here's the deal. Just uh, real quick, um, just type any questions that you have over in the Q&A. We do have some staff here at Directed IRA and at KKOS Lawyers. They'll be filling some questions, um, but they're going to save some good ones. So I'm going to be, you know, checking in and moderating that, and I'll tee up some good questions uh, for Matt and I to hit on uh, throughout. So this will be, you know, a bit of a, a collaborative uh, webinar podcast combo yeah. today. So it'll be good. Again, the slides will be available afterwards. So if you got to dip out early, all good. We'll have the, the recordings up. Um, you know, by Monday and you'll have the slides as well. So we'll yeah. be ready to rock and roll. Now let's go over what we're going to talk about today and let's go ahead and unshare the slide. We're going to go over a number of different points today, but we're going to talk about when to use a solo 401k. Do you need an LLC? How do you qualify? We want to go over the side door solo 401k. <laughs> Talk about contribution limits, some of their cool things that are unique to a solo K, like UDFI exemption on leveraged real estate, um, but also go some of the steps and strategies people use when operating these accounts. So first thing I want to just talk about is what the heck is a solo 401k? I know some of you already have one and might be experienced with it. Some of you are like, I've heard about it or this is I'm brand new. So let me give a quick rundown on what it is for everyone's benefit. The IRS calls these one participant plans and they're somewhat new. They've been around maybe 15 years now. Um, basically what it is, is it's a 401k plan structure that was taken for solo entrepreneurs, self-employed people that have no employees. What the IRS basically said is we're going to let you use a 401k just like you work for a big company, mm -hmm. but it's just you self-employed person. And the reason that's cool is it's not just an IRA you're putting six grand a year into. You're like, oh no, I really need to save more than 6,000 bucks a year. That's not going to get me very far. I want to be able to save 20, 40, 60,000. You're going to send $61,000 a year right now for 2022 in a solo 401k. So the solo 401k is an awesome option for people self-employed that have no other employees. We're going to get into this in a little more detail, um, but it lets you put a lot more money in than you could in an IRA. What would you try to explain it as? I'd well, I think, uh, you know, we had, there's already some questions that kind of popped in earlier as we were getting going, but a lot of people started side hustles, right? Yeah. And those side hustles became their main hustle because yeah. they either let go or they like took a severance or there was just like cutbacks during the pandemic. The side and hustle was way better than the main, yeah, you know, they're the like, main hustle. Man, and they love the lifestyle of it yeah. too. And so, you know, because of that, those side hustles typically you didn't have any full-time employees or yeah. even any part-time employees, or you just had some contractors out there. And so that, you know, then made you eligible to qualify for one of these small business type retirement plans, yeah. like the solo 401k, like it's perfect for you guys out there. Yeah. Well, let me explain this, the side hustle. That's, I think a really important starting point because one of the most common people that sets up a solo 401k actually already has a 401k at mm -hmm. a day job. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, I already have a 401k at my day job and I do have a side hustle, maybe I'm a real estate agent on the side or I do some consulting. I have a, uh, I don't care, you have an eBay store or whatever, you know, Etsy's. You, you got your side hustle, you're making money. Um, or let's, let's think of like Dwight Schrute, okay? <laughs> let's go to the office. All right, this is the best example. Dwight Schrute works, you know, at Dunder Mifflin. Dunder Mifflin has a 401k plan for all of its employees. And Dwight Schrute can participate in this 401k plan, right? Just like Pam and, and what's Jim. It, Jim and, you know, everybody gets a, an account within the 401k plan. Now, one of the things that sucks about the 401k plan at Dunder Mifflin is 
you can buy mutual funds pretty mm-hmm. much or stocks maybe. Mm-hmm. And that's how most employer 401k plans are is you, you just have those options. Well, Dwight's not excited about that. But what do we know about Dwight Schrute? He also has a side hustle, okay? He's got Schrute Farms, okay? Oh. No employees. So Schrute Farms could be Dwight's side hustle that he can establish a solo 401k in. So he can put contributions in and maybe get his match at the Dunder Mifflin 401k, but he can also have the side hustle for solo 401k. We could put more money in, get contribute up to a total of 61,000 between the two. And he can also self-direct that solo 401k. He could buy real estate, crypto, private companies, do all these things we love to do with self-directed mm-hmm. accounts at Directed IRA. And so if you're in that situation where you got the day job with an employer that even you already have a 401k, but you got a side hustle going, a side hustle can qualify for a solo 401k. And it's just Dwight and his brother, you know, they're biz partners. Yeah, or it was so, like his cousin or yeah. something. Or like, I, think was, the, I think it was, was it his cousin? Maybe I don't was know. Brother. He, was, he was a weird Y'all guy. help us out there. He, yeah. you, you attendees, you, you yeah. help us What out was there. Dwight Schrute's, the, uh, his like little partner in his... Oh, his cousin. Cousin, his cousin. was it his, his cousin. cousin? What's his name? I want to get his name. What was his? Mose. 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 <laughs> okay. All right. Love that. All okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now let's talk about that example here, okay? Think of Schrute Farms, okay? And I don't, this could be Dwight's main business hustle, whatever side hustle. So now that's an operating business, right? He has a farm. I think he'd have weddings there, mm-hmm. right? He sells a little beet juice, whatever he's doing. And that's selling goods and services. So when mm-hmm. you think of establishing a solo 401k, you have to have a business selling goods and services, right? Like, let's say some people are like, well, Matt, I've got a business. I own rental properties mm. within my LLC. Yep. Cool. That's not a business that qualifies for a solo 401k. That's rental income. Mm-hmm. And the IRS doesn't allow 401ks to be established and contributed off of rental income. That makes sense. So think of the, the operational business. And that's really requirement number one, because I want to get into the qualification rules here first. And Aaron's been there. We know I've, I've spoke multiple times on the solo 401k and I I'm telling you like every time I speak about a solo 401k in a topic about IRAs, I inevitably have someone come up to me at the, at the meeting and say, Matt, I have a solo 401k or Mm. a QRP or something. And they're like, and I don't have a business. (sighs) I'm like, okay, then you really don't have a solo 401k or some retirement plan. That's an employer based Mm -hmm. qualified plan you have to have a legit business. You can't just set up an LLC or be like, well, I'm John Smith sole proprietorship and I have a solo K now. Mm -hmm. That's gotta have income. It's gotta be a real business. Now it can be a new business, right? You could be like, well, I just started a business and on day two, I'm gonna set up a solo K. Well, that business better have some revenue in it and it better not turn into a hobby under the IRS rules. So you can't just set up some sham company that qualifies you for a solo 401k. So make sure it's a legit business, it's real business. Now this business could have losses, it doesn't have to be profitable, but if you have a business that has losses for three years, you can run into these hobby loss rules and then it does, it's not a legit business, you have problems, but just have the intent to have a real business if you're gonna do a solo K, or already freaking have one in place. Yeah, good point. I mean, you got it, there was, uh, like I know if you go to Fidelity, I think was one, you know, you were mentioned, you know, I have a four, you know, a solo K and I did it at Fidelity or I got one of these EQRP, like they, it's typically just like, you're filling out an application. So they're just like kind of taking you at your word yeah, for, yeah. for what it is. So <laughs> you may very well have one because we've, I've gotten, we've gotten the paperwork and we're reading the statement. We're like, yeah, you have one. I was like, but did you like, what does your business do? Uh, well, nothing. I haven't made any money. I was like, okay, well you just like filled out an application and it's not, legitimized yeah like it's yeah. totally cool that you have it but that it, you it's not the right way so we're trying to like clear up some misconceptions too on what other you know some other people are talking about and different marketing tactics and ideas they're putting out in the marketplace too that are they're they're just incorrect yeah like they're, they're not right so yeah. we're gonna help clear that up as well all right now let's go ahead and share this slide because i want to make a comparison here we're on the solo 401k account guide looking at the difference between a solo 401k and a self-directed IRA. So now these slides are going to get shared. You'll get a copy of these. I know there's a lot of content in this, but I want to make sure everybody's getting the point before we get too far here on why the solo K is cool. 
61,000 bucks a year you can contribute. If, if you're like a self-employed person, you don't get a retirement plan, right? It's on you to do this yourself. A solo K putting 61 grand a year is awesome. If you have a spouse that's employed in that business with you as well, they can also do 61,000. I mean, you could be both, you could be putting in 122,000 a year in a tax deferred vehicle or tax free if you're doing Roth versus traditional. Solo Ks can actually have Roth or traditional accounts. We'll get to that in a minute. But this is just a, a supercharged way to start contributing and building a retirement. I mean, within 10 years of contributions alone, you could have over a half a million dollars yeah. of just contributions. When you think 10 years of an IRA in contributions, y'all could have 60 grand. Yeah. You know, it's just, it, you can build it and grow it faster. So the solo K is an awesome sh um, structure just because I can get more into it based on my contributions. What what you just saw about the solo K that's a positive before we get too far into the, to the details here? Um, I mean, that, that's probably the biggest one is just like the, you, there's only so many like types of investments you can do if you're just, if you qualify, right. That's the big thing. If you qualify for a solo 401k, yeah. it's like, you're just able to do more. So in that example you gave, if I'm like maxing out my contributions, you know, five, 10 years, I got half a million dollars. Like you can go buy, you know, two, three, four, five rental properties, you know, right. especially if like you live in the Midwest. But if you're just doing like small IRA contributions, 6,000, assumed it'd be 6,500, yeah. which is legit. Um, that's, that's not a lot. Like you can't do a ton of investments yeah. like out there to really like supercharge them. Now at the summit, we're going to give like several strategies. I know you yeah. got a cool <laughs> got presentation a to section. like supercharge those, those small balance accounts. But anyways, that's probably like the biggest aha moment, you know, for people. Yeah. And let me contrast it to a self-directed IRA. Cause that's a good. lot of people are like, well, Matt, why would anyone do a self-directed yeah, IRA yeah. rather than a solo K? Well, not everyone is cares to make 60,000 in contributions mm -hmm. here. A lot of people, the most common self-directed investor is someone rolling over existing retirement plan dollars. Yep. They're kind of working with dollars they've already set aside. Maybe it was their Dunder Mifflin 401k they had for 10 or 20 years. It's got money set aside. They got a brokerage IRA already somewhere. They're just transferring over amount. They want to self-direct and buy real estate or a startup or a private fund or crypto. And so, so they're just moving over to a self-directed IRA. Um, so that's one reason why some people will just do self-directed IRA instead of solo K. The other reason people will do a self-directed IRA instead of a solo 401k is they don't have a choice. Yeah. They are not self-employed with a real legit business. They don't qualify for a solo 401k. They have no interest in starting their own business, even if it is just a side hustle. Mm -hmm. And so their only option is a self-directed IRA and putting in 6,000 a year or, you know, rolling over funds from other uh, existing retirement accounts they might have. So, um, so just keep in mind, there are kind of differences between those accounts. And, you know, the majority of our accounts at directed IRA or self-directed IRA accounts um, by far, I mean, it's like, you know, nine to one probably in terms of IRA versus solo 401k accounts. But again, if you are self-employed, you're looking to max out and make large contributions, you have no employees, the solo K is an awesome strategy. I mean, 99% of you in that situation should be doing the solo K over the self-directed IRA. That's legit though. On the, the rollover portion, I think I was, we just did an event, Matt and I were at, that was uh, in the, the web three all right, you can you know this. space, but um, what was interesting is uh, so many people have the an old employer plan. They have a job, yeah. but they have an old four hundred one k with the previous employer. That is like huge to be able to like ter jump start your solo four hundred one k plan to get funds in there yeah. in addition to like new contributions to like go do some cool um, investing. I love that. Um, now you can roll over funds though, to a solo 401k. So let's say you have an old employer 401k, you left corporate America, you started your own small business, you're self-employed, no employees, you can roll over that day job, yep. corporate America, or wherever you were employed at 401k into your solo 401k. But yeah, <laughs> and that could be, you can do Roth 401k and traditional 401k. You can do traditional IRA. If you have a traditional IRA into the solo K, but what did you want to say? <laughs> Except the Roth IRA and right. 401k with the current employer. Yeah. Well, I was going to, I was leaving that for you. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's like, you forgot but, this. I was like, I was leaving it for you, dude. I was like, throwing it over. <laughs> like, throw me a freaking bone, man. <laughs> um, so that is one kind of weird little 
little issue you, everybody's got to be aware of. You cannot roll over Roth IRA funds into a solo 401k. Even if you have a Roth 401k account in the solo K, which you can totally have, you just cannot move Roth IRA into Roth 401k. You can go Roth 401k out to Roth IRA, but you can't go Roth IRA into Roth 401k. Yeah. You can go Roth 401k to Roth 401k. So again, you have the Dunder Mifflin 401k that says yep. some traditional and Roth 401k dollars. You can roll both of those funds into the solo K. Roth IRAs are just always Roth IRAs. They cannot go into anything else. Yeah. They will forever be Roth IRAs. So just keep that in mind. They're not going to go into the don't Roth shoot 401k. us. We're just the messenger. Yeah, we're just we're just telling you. Yeah, write your congressman if you don't like it. You <laughs> yeah. know, go. Sorry, march down. You know, Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue. Do what you got to do. All right. I want to get that changed too. Okay. Um, well, let's hit a couple other things here on benefits on the solo K. Then I want to get into how the contribution rules work, okay. deadlines, and, and then stuff. we'll hit some questions. Yeah, and let's grab some question or two that you like. Um, all right, here's a couple other things that are cool about the solo four hundred one k. You can loan yourself money. Okay? Mm -hmm. You cannot loan yourself money from an IRA. Now, during the CARES Act in 2020, you could. There's a weird little exception, but um, you can't loan yourself money from an IRA. But in a 401k, in your solo 401k structure, you can loan yourself half the balance of the 401k not to exceed $50,000. So if you've got a $200,000 IRA or old employer 401k you want to roll into the solo K, mm -hmm. you could take a loan out of it for fifty grand to do whatever you want. We have a lot of new cl clients who start new businesses. And in the law firm at Kika Stories, we have a lot of new business owners who are like, man, I got my new S Corp. I'm running my new business. It's, it's just me. I'm going to roll over my old employer 401k, start a solo K, mm -hmm. and I'm going to loan myself out the 50 grand. Maybe I got 100 grand in this. And I'll loan myself out 50 grand, and I'll use that for startup expenses in my new business, right? Help it get off the ground. I've had clients buy franchises doing that or or just help fund some initial startup costs or some loss of income that they're going to have. And so that loan option, you have to pay it back in five years. You got to make at least quarterly payments. It's not like you can just do a five-year balloon and the rate is prime plus 2%. Mm. Do you know what prime is right now? I looked it up before we got on. Guess oh. what the prime rate of interest is right now? Is it four and a quarter? No. Four and a half? More. Five? More. Five and a half? More. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 6.25. Prime oh, right now oh is 6.25. So, so that means it's going to be seven probably by year end. Yeah. So, wow. so that means 8.25 is the interest rate you're paying back to your 401k when you loan yourself out this 50 grand. Still right not now. horrible though. That's, it's not horrible. That's not horrible. And guys, you're paying back yourself. Yeah. I have clients that, that do this solo 401k, take the loan out of 50,000. And they'll use it to pay off credit cards mm -hmm. that they're paying 18% interest. Yeah, or even, even higher now. Yeah, even higher. Even if I'm paying 8% interest, back to my solo 401k, guys, that 8% is going to your 401k account. It's not going to a bank. It's going to you. Yep. So it, it, it's, you're winning. and You're saving on all this interest. And so that, that 401k loan option is pretty cool. It just gives you some flexibility way to access and tap that money for some personal expenses or a personal business you're starting up. A um, little unique, of course, in the solo 401k that you cannot do with an IRA. Oh, this is a good question. You want to take a question yeah, or two yeah, before we get it. into some tax stuff? Okay, so we get this a lot too. My LLC owns a house, okay? Can I sell it at full market value to my self-directed solo 401k? LLC, as long as it's at market value. Um, who was the question? Michelle. Michelle. Sorry, Michelle. Um, it's a no-go zone, all right? Um, it's called a privity transaction. So we have prior webinars on privity transactions. That's an important point. The rules for IRAs and 401ks in terms of who you can and can't transact with are the same. So what what is in the privative transaction rules that applies to solo 401ks and self-directed IRAs, all types of IRA accounts, retirement accounts, is basically a rule that says you cannot transact your retirement account with yourself or certain disqualified family, your spouse, parents, kids, grandkids, okay? These are all people who are restricted from transacting your 401k or your IRA with. So real estate you already own, you cannot transact with yourself. Even if you got an appraisal and did it at fair market value, you still can't do it, all right? Now it's possible if you did it at fair market value, you could request a, a prohibited transaction exemption, you know, with 
with the Department of Labor and get a waiver on that. That's, we've done that. I've done that, help a few clients through that over the years, but it's very rare. It's going to take you nine months and $10,000 in legal fees alone. So um, if you're really hell bent on doing that, it is possible, mm-hmm. but um, I, I don't do that as a strategy. I'm not saying think about doing this. It's, you kind of have to have a weird situation where that makes sense to do it. So, um, but yeah, you could, um, uh, you can use a solo K, of course, to buy new real estate, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and make a new investment. And that's the self-directed component of the solo Ks that we do at Directed is, you know, unlike a solo 401k you may set up at Charles Schwab or Fidelity, a solo 401k you're doing with us at Directed, the, K, the law firm Keiko Soros, our law firm sets it up, is at Directed, we're going to say you can invest in, in whatever you want, as mm-hmm. long as it's allowed under the rule, you can buy real estate, you could buy the rental. You just can't buy the rental from yourself. Absolutely. Um, there was, I like this one. Let's see. Okay. Drew has a, this is a good question. Man, Drew doing some big stuff, bud. I'm 27 years old, have six figures invested in crypto. I used, uh, my, uh, my solo 401k, my Roth solo Love 401k, which is, Congratulations, Drew. Good job. Good on you. If in the next five to 10 years that money turns in to four to five million dollars, it's prayer emoji, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, or more, how can I get money out of, out of this account to buy my first house with my intent to live in it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, first, qu- first answer is Remember, your 401k, your IRA is not to live on today, okay? Drew, if you're 27, you're saving in this account in a tax-efficient way for retirement. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, guys, I want to buy a house when I'm 30, be buying crypto personally. Whatever you're doing in terms of investments, you know, you've got to have a short-term game at 27, right? Those that are at 50 are like, I'm pretty much all long-term game. It's all, I'm on the back nine here, you know? At 27, Drew, you got, you got to, I mean, it ain't going to work. So now let me hit a couple points. You can always pull out contributions Mm -hmm. early without penalty. So that's a possibility. But if you have had huge growth in this thing, and which is awesome, right? This is an awesome problem to have. It's hard to get it out. Now, there is something called the 72T distribution where you can take early distributions, what are called substantially equal periodic payments. Which he put in there. Okay. All right. (laughs) Let me just say that is not a question for a webinar. Bless you. That is something you're going to spend a few hours on with a tax lawyer, so especially it. in your situation on how to do that. Make a plan if that's something you're really looking to do. It's a possibility, but it's very inflexible. A lot of people end up doing that over the years. I just talked to clients and they, they like life changes in three years and they want to get out of the plan that they set up with the IRS and it's not flexible. So um, but it's possible if you end up having this, you know, you're hitting some home runs and you're at 5 million and you're like, man, mm-hmm. I got 20 more years until I'm 59 and a half. Um, what do I do? Um, there, there's some options there, but that's like, that's tax lawyer consult, which we can do at KKOS lawyers. If you want to get over there and do a, a tax consult, um, and get into that. It's awesome. I like it. All right. Should we hit on some tax stuff? Yeah. Oh, wait, let's hit on this one before we go. Is it too late to set up a solo 401k if I extended my 2021 return? Okay. That's from, <laughs> that's from Sandy. Okay, right today is, what is today? Sorry, October 13th. Yep. It is October 13th. You have two days, technically, to still set up a solo 401k for 2021. but You can only make employer contributions, Okay. Employee contributions are going to be passed. You ha- should have had the plan set up by year end technically to make employee contributions. Um, but for 2021, if you extended your return and you're a sole proprietor, your deadline is really October 15th to make employer contributions. And the SECURE Act from a couple years ago allows you to set up the plan late for a prior year. So you could do that. What I would just say is you pretty much have tomorrow to get this plan set up and to make contributions. I don't know that you're going to make it. I just am going to be honest to get a plan doc drafted, you know, KKOS lawyers, we set them up. We can set it up in a day, but you got to get a bank account open. You got to get this thing funded by Monday. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say you got like a Hail Mary pass to pull it off. I wouldn't even want to pressure my team. I would just say it's, you probably waited too long. I love the question. <laughs> Maybe last week, you, last week you could have pulled it off. So this is an important point though. 
for those of you that want to do a solo K for 2022, set it up now. If you start doing this in December, okay, and setting it up and trying to get the structure, you're you're rushing in on the on the deadline here. Mm-hmm. You're going to be stressed. You're going to be running in with everyone else who's late. You know, it's like going to the bathroom at the halftime, yeah. you know, <laughs> don't do that, right? You're going to be there forever. It's not as pleasant of a process, you know, uh, yeah. it's busy for everyone. Okay. Go, you know, in the middle of the first quarter. Yeah. All right. No one's out there. All right. So it's a much smoother, easier, you know, quicker process, but get the solo key now. Now on the solo key, and let's go to the slides here on definitions, deadlines, and diagrams, because I want to go over the deadlines of contribution. So if you set up the solo K in 2022, as long as you get it up, set up by December 31st, 2022, you can make contributions still in 2023. You don't have to have the thing fully contributed to, right? You have your, till your company tax return deadline. Mm -hmm. So if you're a S corp, you have until March 15th plus extensions, which should put you to September 15th. Um, Or if you're a sole prop, you've got until April 15th, plus extensions October 15th to tw- of 2023 mm-hmm. to make 2022 contributions. Mm-hmm. Now, the biggest mistake people make though on this is they get a little, you know, loose with this and they're like, all right, I set my solo cap in 2022, Matt. Mm-hmm. And then they call us in 2023 and they're like, all right, I want to make my employee contribution. Oh, you do? Okay. And it's March. Mm-hmm. All right. Did you put that on your W-2? Because mm-hmm. that was due to the IRS on January 31st. Nope, I didn't do that. Okay, you're going to have to go back and amend your W-2, which isn't going to look awesome, all right? Um, Plus, it's a pain. So the one thing you want to do is get the plan set up in the year you want to contribute. That's important to make sure you can make employee and employer contributions. If you don't get it set up by a year end in the year you want to make contributions, you could set it up late, but you're only going to be able to do employer contributions technically. Mm -hmm. The IRS hasn't really came down on that, but that's the safe position. So... um, so what I want to just That'd say be like is, best practices. Yeah, you know? that's probably the, that's yeah. the best way to say it. Yeah. Best, best practice, practices. Get it set up in the year you want to contribute. You have until later to make the contributions, but for those of you that are S corps, you really have till January thirty first to figure it out so that it, the money can go on the W two. That way you've reported the contribution correctly. Even if it's Roth four hundred one k contribution, that's still got to be on the W two. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're going to be coordinating with your accountant, your payroll company, whoever you're doing uh, your W two. Make sure they know what the heck's going on here. Um, all right, so let's um, break down the contributions, though, because I kind of skipped over that. So when you contribute to a solo K, right, you're doing employee contributions and employer contributions, mm-hmm. right? Because you happen to own the business, but you're also so, the employee, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Because you don't have any other employees, right? right. You, yeah. sh- you shouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> And so we're going to be very generous on what's called the match, right? We're going to make it as generous as possible because you're such a good employee. So, but what's happened right now is the contribution amount is for, this is for 2022, is 20500 as an employee. Okay, so if I make 20500 I can put in 20500 as an employee. If I make $10,000 as an employee, that's on my W-2 or my total self-employment income, I can put in $10,000. If I make a hundred grand, I can put in 20,500 as an employee. Okay. It's dollar for dollar up to 20,500 as an employee contribution. Well, how do I get to 61 then? Well, the difference here, the other 40,500 is going to be employer contributions. Mm-hmm. That's the match. And that's based on your total, um, uh, uh, 25% of your employee pay. So if you have a W2 and an S corp, it's 25% of your W-2. Let's say you had, let's just do a quick example. Let's say you had a $100,000 W-2. Okay. You could put 20500 in because you made a hundred. Yeah. Okay. You also get to put in 25% of the 100000 as the employer contribution, which would be twenty five grand. Mm-hmm. So I, on 100000 I put in twenty five plus 20500 I put in 45500 is contributions off of $100,000. That's pretty freaking awesome. It is awesome. So now these the employees going up though. You were showing me in twenty twenty three employers going to go up. Looks like it's going to go up a couple grand. Yeah. So, so which so is that, which is good. Yeah, because of inflation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when was the last time when w- that IRAs increased? It's been a long time. Like, yeah. But it looks like that's going to go up five hundred bucks or so. So everything's going up, including uh, our groceries and gas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know if it makes <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but that's cool. You get to put more money away. We're always loving the contribution amounts going up because it means we can save and do more in a tax efficient way. So, um, okay. Now let's, um, I want to talk about, let's go off the slides here. So I want to talk though about um, account types because you can do Roth or traditional. And so you're going to have different accounts. You need to track this money separate. So it directed, for example, if let's say it's you're doing Roth and traditional dollars, you're actually have two accounts here because mm -hmm. you got to track and contribute your Roth dollars separately from your traditional dollars and they're invested separately and tracked separately. So, um, so those are two different buckets and two different accounts. Let's say your spouse is in the business too and has a traditional and Roth. They're going to have two accounts between the two of you. You have four accounts yeah. technically with money being tracked separately. So it's part of the business. Yeah. It's, it's like it, part of how it works. If you have an account at, you know, wh whatever company, Fidelity, wherever you got the day job, right? They're tracking your 401k account of Roth and traditional dollars separately too. So, um, so you need to track them separate. Now the Roth dollars can only come in off of employee contributions. So that 20,500, you can pick, do I want it to be traditional or Roth mm -hmm. or half traditional, half Roth? You get a pick. The employer match though, let's say the max out of another 40,500, that can be tr that can only be traditional, mm -hmm. but you can convert it to Roth yeah. <laughs> in day two. Mm -hmm. And the reason that has to be traditional is the company expenses it. So the company is going to expense and it's going to be on your company tax return line, whether that's your 1120S for the S-Corps or those that have a Schedule C, it's a line item of retirement plan, company contributions. Yeah. It comes out as an expense. And so if you convert it day two, you pick it back up as income as a Roth conversion and it kind of washes out. So you can have all Roth dollars if you want. Just know it's a two-step process on the employer contribution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, okay, let me hit on something real quick because we've got so many questions. We have a few hundred people live here too, which is always cool. But I think a lot of you missed it at the beginning where we were talking about what would qualify for you to have a solo 401k. So let's just kind of recap that real quick. If you have a like a rental, it, 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 um, let, let's say you have 20 rental properties and you're like, great, I got I can do a solo 401k. No, that doesn't qualify for that. It's like got to be an operational business selling goods and services. Like that's what qualifies. Now, could you have a stock trading business? Yes, you do that. That's active. Like there's, you know, you're, there's something doing there. If you're fixing and flipping, could you do that? Yes. Hard money lending? Yes. So it's just like, you know, uh, a, pr a property managing, property management? Yes. So somebody came in and put that like, I have rentals, but I also have a property management yeah. company. That's legit. Like you can do that. Yeah, and so. some, sometimes we call that one the side door 401k. So that's like the side door solo 401k, not to be confused with the back door Roth IRA, but the side door solo 401k is some, we have a lot of clients that just have rentals, right? And maybe they, that's, they just have passive income. Mm -hmm. They have no day job, no small business, no desire to do it. They're like, I just have a, a rental portfolio that gives me rental income. It's building long-term wealth and I can live off the cash flow. Or maybe they just have the day job, 401k and they got rentals. All right. Well, we can't set up a solo K off the LLCs that own the rentals. Okay. That's rental income, mm -hmm. but you can set up your own property management company that is an LLC, or it could even be just to be a sole prop that is receiving income to manage your own rentals. Mm -hmm. Right now we would never do this or set up your own management company unless you're trying to justify a, a solo 401k or some other benefit employee benefit thing. So you're basically sending income over to your management company, you're expensing it in your rental business and picking it up as income on Schedule C or you know probably on Schedule C, um, whether you're doing a single member LLC or it's just a sole prop. But then that sole prop basically can establish a solo 401k because it has ordinary income. And you would only do that if you were gonna contribute that income, of course, into mm -hmm. a solo K. Um, or you could roll over money you know, into the solo K also but you just need a legit business and income that's going to be on a tax return, yep. showing revenue, showing expense. It's operating. You'll need to set up a bank account for it. You got to actually legitimize it. Okay. We're not just like throwing a name on something and, you know, moving money around. Okay. There's an actual legitimate service happening between your own companies, um, your management company, and your rental company. I mean, you are actually 
generally the one providing that service of management, but we're tracking money through a bank account so you can show a proper accounting of money going back and forth. Yeah. So, which we can roll in to that slide. Yeah. Let's throw up the, the next slide and we'll show you how it's structured. Cool. Okay. So here, just what we're showing here on the slide is keep in mind, you have to have a business that adopts the 401, the solo 401k. All right. And that 401k account can have multiple accounts in there for you or your spouse. Um, you can roll an old employer 401k into it. And, um, and so that's how it works. Now on the next slide, um, what we see here is go to the next one. If you, if you have employees, um, sorry, these slides aren't, aren't flipping through, but that's okay. We'll kill the slides. So if you have employees, one of the things that's important to realize is you can still have part-time employees, but once they've worked for you for three years, cl click off the slides if you don't mind, guys. Okay, so if you have part-time employees, they can actually work for you for up to three years mm -hmm. before you need to add them on. If you have a full-time employee, once they've worked for you for a year, the solo K is not going to work for you. Yeah. You can still kind of keep the solo K and put it in like a frozen status where you're not making new contributions. You're working with the money you have. Eventually, you kind of got to wind it down after a yeah. few years. But what happens is a lot of our clients who have been self-employed, that side hustle or that just kind of self-employment, it's just me, grows into a bigger business. They start hiring employees. Mm -hmm. And now they're like, ah, I got to wind the solo K down. And yep. so, so and that's okay. You can still, like I said, keep the solo K and it's just in a frozen status. But... Um, you're not gonna be able to make new contributions to it. So, and it's really hard to basically offer the solo K to an employee. Mm -hmm. I've had some clients try to work with that over the years and it just doesn't really work really. I just don't love it. They had, um, okay. I know some of you are like already figuring out, a lot of you are creative. you creative finance people, business owners, and you're like, all right, well then I'll just let that full-time person go. Before the year's up. Yeah. <laughs> there you go part-time. And then I'm going to rehire them. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, you know. It okay. might work for your solo K, okay, but it's probably yeah. a bad business move. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, I know what y'all are thinking because we do get those questions that come in. I just read one. I was like, all right, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. Um, now, just, for yeah, those. Best that, practices, right? Yeah. Best practices. Now, I will make this note. If you do have employees and you basically want a self-directed 401K, that is possible. Yeah. It's very complicated and expensive. Like you're gonna spend five to 10 grand in fees to set that up. Mm -hmm. Like KQS Lawyers basically has a 401k plan and I wanted to self-direct years ago. So I went through the process and the pain of being able to figure out how to do it for myself because I wanted to self-direct my own account within it. It's clunky, it's mm -hmm. complicated. I even hate it and I love this stuff. So, so if, and I do have some clients that have gone through the house over the years to do it. But just because you have employees, you end up having a very complicated structure because you have to have readily available investments for your employees. So you end up having a regular 401k plan that's going to have regular investment options for everyone, including yourself. But then you have to have a mechanism to get the money off of that, you know, ancient Wall Street 401k provider to then self-direct, which can do, we, you can do, and we can do a custodial account at directed. But just know that's going to take some complex planning, at least five to 10 grand in fees. But it is an option. Mm -hmm. I just want to throw it out there. Some people do really want that. They have employees and it's an important option, but um, that's something that hopefully over time, well, I'm trying to figure out a way to break that down and make it easier. But right now I'm just saying it's a pain, but a possibility. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is good one from Ying. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Um, can I contribute 20,500 plus my 25% employer match into my solo K and then I want to do 6000 in my SEP IRA. Uh, no. So you could possibly do a backdoor Roth IRA on top of that, Ying, though. That's what I would do. So you can max out on the 401k and still do a backdoor Roth IRA because it's a non-deductible employee contribution you convert to Roth. But a SEP is deductible contribution, SEP IRAs, and you're already maxing out the deductible contribution limits with the 401k. So... I don't usually recommend that as a strategy, but I would, in that example, you're only trying to throw six grand in, right? Yes, yeah, six grand into the SEP. I just do the backdoor Roth IRA. Now, if you have traditional dollars in your solo K, that's fine. The backdoor Roth still works. But if you have traditional IRA dollars, 
In order to do the backdoor Roth IRA, you have to convert all your regular traditional IRA dollars to Roth first. We have other stuff on the backdoor Roth IRA to watch other podcasts mm -hmm. on the Directed IRA podcast. Did we do a webinar on that? We did. Backdoor Roth okay, yeah. prior webinar on the backdoor out. Roth IRA. Um, yeah. so I'd, I'd, I'd do that before I'd do the SEP IRA. Okay. I don't think the SEP works. Um, let's see. Okay. I think that was good. If you have a business to get a plan. Let's, oh, okay. This one's good. David, if you have a business with employees, is it possible to get a plan document that allows in-service distribution so that it's easy to move money from the plan into self-directed IRAs? Um, okay. Uh, no, David, I love your attempt there, but um, in-service distributions are something that's restricted by the tax code. So, you know, um, basically if someone could is allowed to do an in-service distribution for whatever reason, they hit retirement plan age, maybe you're allowing in-service distributions at any age of employer contributions. That's something allowed to do. Um, it's weird that you can in-service distribute employer contributions mm -hmm. instead of employee, but that's the freaking tax code. But so if you want to have an employer plan that allows that, you can, but they're just going to roll out to an IRA. So you don't need anything, you know, special. They're just going to roll out to an IRA. Now, what you could do is just look at your existing employer plan document. And most employer plans have what's called an adoption agreement that basically gives you the options of what to choose. Do I want to allow in service distributions in certain situations? And you would basically say yes. Now, if you have an adoption agreement that you didn't really think this through when you set it up, you can go back and amend that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something you amend for 2022, or you can amend it now if you wanted. And you got to give notice to all your employees. So everybody's treated the same. But that could allow in-service distributions. But there's only qualifying areas of that. Like I said, someone hits 59 and a half retirement plan age. You could actually set it at 55 if you wanted to. That's the earliest. Mm -hmm. Most plans do 59 and a half, but you could actually go to 55 if you wanted. Um, the other thing, like I said, was employer contributions that are fully vested. Those can actually be rolled out too. After tax employee contributions for the mega backdoor Roth stuff works. But again, if you're a highly compensated employee or a business owner, mm -hmm. those don't work. So there's a lot of like little like options that, that then have like a caveat to it. So yes, you could allow in-service distributions. I would look at your adoption agreement in the employer 401k to see what's allowed for people to roll out, but they could roll to directed IRA. They could roll the fidelity. They could roll the whatever they whatever they wanted, you know, mm -hmm. if they can roll out, they can go to whatever plan they want or IRA. I did see a few questions that were like, cause I mean, a lot of you that have already been self-directing, taking control of your retirement and love like investing in real estate or other private companies that you think are going to go huge, then, <laughs> uh, you know, you can do like a, a 401k group plan. Like we have custodial accounts, like you can do that. Like you have full-time employees, like what Matt does, at, you know, in one of his other companies at the law firm, right? Yeah. You know, that, that they do where they're self-directing their 401k. It's not easy, you mm -hmm. know, but it, but that totally can be done. So for those of you that ask, they're like, hey, I love self-directing, but I want, like, I have a business and I got 20 employees and I'd like to teach them these strategies. And I, I totally get it. Because, you, you know, that good on you as an employer want to help your employees because they probably have been asking you about it. And mm -hmm. that's that could be maybe you need to do that to retain your talent. Yeah. So totally be done. Yeah. Okay. One other topic I wanted to hit, and let's grab any other questions you have, is one other feature you can have with the Solo 401k is you can have a bank account in mm. the Solo 401k's name. Okay. Now, in the Solo K you can be trustee of it. So you can decide if you want to self trustee this thing and mm -hmm. kind of do it on your own, or if you want to have a custodial account with directed. Now, the nice thing about the custodial account with directed is you're going to get statements. We're going to do your tax reporting. We're going to do 1099s. If you convert, we're going to help you with the 5,500. If you got more than 250,000 in assets, what's the 5,500? Yeah. <laughs> so a solo K has a tax form that has to be filed called a 5,500. You're exempt from it until you get 250,000 of assets. Once you have 250,000 of assets, you gotta start filing this 5,500 tax form. And we do it if you're with accounts with us as part of the custodial plan, which is 295 bucks. So 
um, each year per account. If you have a traditional and Roth, you'd have two accounts. Okay, it's two ninety five. Or if you have an account, spouse has an account, two ninety five for each account. But then we're helping track, have doing statements on your contributions, doing tax if you're doing mm-hmm. distributions or Roth conversions. We're helping with the tax reporting and handling that for you. So, but there is an option where it's like I got it on my own and I want to do it on my own. So if you're like that, and I, we do run into those clients, totally so cool. say it's an option. Just know you are on your own. So make sure you know what you're doing. Um, it's kind of like being a gun owner, right? You got to go to gun safety class mm-hmm. and know what you're doing. Yeah. So um, that's a good analogy. Yeah. I like yeah, that. One. Yeah. So that's a new one. Yeah. We've used that. <laughs> I've stole that. I think Mark's used that one. <laughs> or I did it and he stole it from me. I can't ever remember. Um, <laughs> Who is the originator? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, those are the options. And um, as the trustee of the solo 401k, though, I mean, you're the one that can make the decisions, of course, mm-hmm. on what to invest. And, you know, you are the employer. So you're kind of in control of this. You can amend the plan if you want. You can close the plan down when you need to. You know, if you do start having employees, you need to close it down. You want to add in different things to the plan that you, like amending the adoption agreement, like we talked about in the solo K, you can do that because um, you're in control as the business owner and the trustee of the solo K. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Want to hit some questions? Yeah. Do you yeah. have any other slides we want to hit on? Um, uh, well, the maybe. last thing I, I mentioned this at the beginning, we talked about the 401k loan, but oh, okay. there is yeah. a tax called um, UDFI that applies to IRAs when they buy assets with debt. Mm-hmm. So retirement accounts can use debt to purchase assets. You just have to do what's called non-recourse loans. Mm-hmm. There's a number of those lenders on our website. There'll mm-hmm. be some of the self-directed IRA summit next week. But they're basically banks that'll say, hey, we'll loan money to mm-hmm. your IRA or 401k buying real estate. We're going to secure our loan against the real yeah. estate, and you don't have to guarantee it. Mm-hmm. See, if you guarantee debt for your IRA or 401k, it causes a prohibited transaction. It's on you. Yeah, because you, you are guaranteeing it and benefiting your retirement account from your personal credit, which is, which is restricted specifically in the code. So, so you need to get what's called non-recourse loans. You want to deal with the banks that do those types of loans. Um, but if you do get debt in an IRA, you have to pay tax on the profits from the debt. It's called a UDFI tax. Solo Ks are exempt from that UDFI tax on leveraged real estate only. So some people are like, Solo Ks are, are exempt. exempt from UBIT. UBIT. No, they're not. They're exempt from leveraged real estate UDFI tax. It's a very little narrow exception. Again, incorrect information being marketed yeah. out there. And it's like, no, that's not correct. Yeah. So I can flip 100 houses in my no. Solo 401k and not have UBIT? No, no, no. But I was told it was exempt from UBIT. No, that's incorrect. Yeah, so typically on those non recourse loans, too, it's any dependent upon the lender, 50 to 70% is what they want to come as, as the down payment. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll so, loan. They'll yeah. loan. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so they'll, like, if you have. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. You have 30% yes. down, they'll loan 70. Yeah. You know, and they want skin in the game, right? Which is awesome. Yeah. That's totally awesome. Like, 30, good. yeah. They're going to, like, give you 70%. Like, yeah, leverage it. Buy more on. assets. If you got good properties, you know. No partners on the deal, not having to do JV. Now, there's anything wrong with that, you know. <laughs> and you could do the same deal with, like, a private lender. If you use a private lender, though, it also has to be non-recourse. So, for just remember that. If you're not using, like, a bank, another financial institution, and it's a private lender that's going to do the deal and participate, it still has to be non-recourse. So, we've had documents come across that were done incorrectly. Yeah. So, just remember that. But that's a cool strategy, too. You yeah. don't have to use a bank. Um, so right now, what I'd say, if you're thinking about the Solo K for 2022, get started now. We actually set up the Solo 401k plans that the law firm, sister company, KQS Lawyers, has a um, IRS pre-approved Solo 401k plan. And you can get a consult with the attorney if you want, or you can just do a docs only and get the docs done. And then at Directed, we're doing the, the custodial accounts for those helping you get them invested, doing statements, tracking that, helping with the tax reporting as well. And so, um, so it's kind of like two pieces to this, setting up the plan and then having the, the solo 401k mm-hmm. account to yeah, then invest slide. the plan. You want to throw that slide out for those watching or you can get it up there? Yeah, the step one. Yeah, so. Let's throw that up there for you uh, visual people. And Yeah, so these are go. the options in setting it up. Um, now, some people come to this like, man, I have a solo K, but I set it up with TD Ameritrade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You need a restatement. Yeah. We can keep your same plan name. Not a big deal. And even if you got an EIN, we can work with that and keep it. But we need to restate it to a document because TD Ameritrade's Solo K doc basically lets you buy stocks and mutual funds. Right. Ours is going to be open architecture. You can invest in whatever investments are allowed by law. So that's what the restatement is. 
Um, but now the law firm is just going to say in November always has a special. It's like a mm-hmm. hundred bucks off for the attorney or 50 I think we're going to kick it off early on. too. Yeah. So yeah, if you, if you want to get ready on this now, um, just say, just say Aaron Halderman said it was okay. <laughs> I know I'm early for the special, <laughs> but I got this secret message <laughs> in the directed IRA webinar. <laughs> we use the special password. <laughs> the name password. Say, Aaron Halderman <laughs> said it was okay. I'm going to let him take the heat. Yeah. Um, no, that's totally cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll honor that. And the, the, what we try to do is we set up a ton of solo case. Like mm-hmm. in November and December, we set up more. We set up the whole rest of the year mm-hmm. because everybody's like, man, I need to do this. I need to get contributions in for this year. I'm making money. I started my business. Yep. I'm ready for it. And I got to get it set up by year end to make full opportunity of contributions. And, you know, even if I don't put the money in in 2020 until 2023. So it's a super busy time in setting up. So we try to get everybody in in November by giving you a discount. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but of course you can get in December too. Just pay a little more. So we can, okay. Yeah. Let's look at the custodial account options real quick. Throw out that step too, please. And then we'll give you a special for the, to get started for you, uh, fast action people. Yeah. That are ready. <laughs> so do you want to go over the options here on step two? Yeah. So it's pretty easy. We just have a, uh, the custodial account option. Um, we've, you know, we feel like we have some very fair, uh, good pricing to do that. So if you're like, you know, want the extra help, want us to handle more of the, the, the IRS filings, that 5,500 EZs, the 1099Rs, like we'll do that. And that's that's what that option's for. It's just $295 per account per year. Easy peasy. Now, if you're like, hey, I'm just a do it myselfer and figure it all out and, you know, that's cool. We have an annual compliance plan that, you know, you should do as well and that's just $150 a year it's there's no per account type deal it's just $150 a year and we'll help you with the compliance just make sure everything's looking good basically so those are your two options um yeah pretty straightforward yeah and we'll, we'll keep it going you throw the last slide and then we have a little special there to get going yeah yeah so we even save 50 bucks at directed ira just use webinar 50 there you go you'll save 50 bucks there on your account fee for the solo k account at directed ira We'll even let you use it for an IRA account. We won't tell anyone. Yeah. Just, if you throw it on an IRA account, you get 50 bucks off too. If you go to our site in the upper right-hand corner, headdirectedira.com, you can hit uh, schedule an appointment. And if you have additional questions, um, again, we're not going to go over any tax or legal type stuff. So, um, But we're, we definitely will answer any IRA or solo K questions um, as it pertains to opening an account. And it's, it's free. So you can do 15, 30-minute calls for free and we'll uh, discuss that. But the purpose of that is like, it's a getting started call uh, to help clear up anything else. So um, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that, that call is designed yeah. like, hey guys, I'm, I wanna set up an account, okay? Yeah. Don't take that as like, <laughs> I don't wanna pay a tax consult. Yeah, so, we're not gonna do that. So yeah, so that just just be aware of that. So um, and we appreciate people respecting that. So um, then if you need the consult and you know it and you're like, guys, I have a ton of freaking questions and con- I wanna calculate this thing and I'm engineer and I got two spreadsheets going and you know, Okay, go call the law firm, KQS yeah. Lawyers. You can just go to kqslawyers.com and you can set up a consult and get in all the nitty gritty there. And then you just pay by the hour. Um, or you could just be like, you could just pay for the solo case setup mm-hmm. and you get an hour of time anyways, plus all the setup of the plan documents. So one good point, because our fee structure is a little different, is I see some questions coming in on that custodial account option, that 295 you know, annually per account. It doesn't matter how many investments or the account value. Even if you're rolling over a few million dollars from an old 401k, like it's 295 bucks. Doesn't matter to us. Like good on you. Congratulations. Like yeah. you're a good saver. Yeah. Like, you have 10 investments in there, cool. 295. Like a lot yep. of companies in our space charge per asset in your account. And so that adds up, of course, if you're doing multiple assets and obviously, mm-hmm. You know, everyone wants an account that grows. So yep. I think a lot of people are like, yeah, but I'm just starting. I don't really care. This company I'm going to use charges 1% of my account value, but I only starting out with 10,000. Oh, okay, where's your account be in 10 years? Are you going to love that fee then when your account's not 10,000? <laughs> like, so just think through the fees a little bit. Um, but yeah, we just try to keep it simple and fair. 295 bucks straightforward. Yep. You know what you're getting. And if you have a self-directed IRA at another custodian and you want to roll over to us, that's that's easy. It's just you, step one is open an account. Step two is we have some transfer paperwork and we'll help you with that uh, to submit it over there and we'll 
we're, and if it's invested in other investments, you do what's called an in-kind transfer, and we'll help with all that. So it's pretty easy. The longest part is just like <laughs> the other custodian doesn't want to let that go, right? So yeah, we're like, yeah, but that you know, we get ten plus of those a day, yeah. so easy. So we're getting lots of transfers and know how to work through it, and um, so. So we, yeah, we can ha help handle that for you. So all right, any other questions coming through? We need to hit. Uh, no, we got some people coming okay. out to our self-directed IRA summit next week. So thank you. If you want to hit webinar one hundred, you can get a hundred dollars off a ticket there. So come on out. If you want to play golf on sa Saturday for charity, grab a ticket for that. Yeah, that'll be awesome, and we'd we'd love to see you. Um, yeah, all right. I think that's think we're good. Thanks everyone for all your great questions. And again, we'll have the replay of this up, and we'll have the slides up. Uh, even if some of them were a little hard to see, like we'll have those clear and pretty for you. So don't worry. And if you need to get started, then just go to directedira.com, schedule a new account appointment, and uh, we'll rock and roll and help you. Yeah. Okay. Until well, then, stay calm, self direct on. Thanks everyone. Thank you.